Starship has a new now targeting month for Test Flight 3. NASA's timeline for the first crewed HLS mission slips. Starlink's direct to sell capabilities is switched on. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. During an Artemis media briefing on January 9th, SpaceX's Jessica Jensen informed the press that obtaining an updated FAA launch license was key to scheduling Starship's next test flight. She said that from a hardware readiness perspective, the company is good to go for January, but is currently targeting February pending a license, which is when they are expecting to receive it. And NASA updated the timeline for the next two Artemis missions, two and three, the latter will use a lunar variant of Starship called the Human Landing System to place humans back on the moon's surface, which has now slipped to September of 2026 due to issues and challenges with Artemis 2 hardware that has delayed testing and so pushed everything to follow back as well. Even still, you should expect several more delays between now and then. SpaceX has switched on the recent half dozen direct to sell capable Starlink satellites that made orbit just weeks ago, and they successfully sent and received the first text messages using T-Mobile which is much harder than you'd think if you just pause to read the press release on the screen. On Sunday pre-evening, Falcon 9 launched 23 more Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit from Slick 40 Florida upon a booster flying for its 16th time, which landed out at sea on the autonomous drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas. Coming up next week is Axiom Space's third private commercial launch using Crew Dragon. On the 17th, Falcon 9 will hoist four crew members to the space station where they will spend 14 days doing space stuff. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On January 8th, after a decade of development and years of delays due to development delays with Blue Origin's new BE-4 engines, ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket lifted off from Launch Complex 41 at the Cape for its first certification mission. And liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. Carrying the Peregrine Lunar Lander, which itself was carrying 20 payloads, including five from NASA. The rocket itself performed nominally, but the unmanned lunar lander suffered a propellant leak associated with the helium pressurization valve just hours after launching, which was causing the ACS thrusters to operate beyond what they were supposed to to keep it from tumbling out of control. And so its manufacturer, Astrobotics, said in a statement that in just a matter of days, which should be any time now, it would run out of propellant and no longer be able to stabilize itself. Short and sweet, that's all for today, but thanks for stopping by. A nominal weekend to you and yours, and until next time, Godspeed.